Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Edward, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. God, uh, a reading from the book of Genesis. God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son Isaac, your only one, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took with him his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had cut for the Holocaust, set out for the place which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham got sight of the place from afar, and he said to his servants, both of you stay here and wait with the donkey, while I and the boy go up for yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon, Abraham took the wood for the Holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke to his father, Abraham. Father, Isaac said. Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the Holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the sheep for the Holocaust. Then the two continued going forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on top of the wood of the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he answered. Do not lay your hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram, caught it by its horns in the thicket. So when he went, he took the ram and offered it up as a holocaust in place of his son. Abraham named the site Yahweh Yira. Hence people now say, on the mountain the Lord will see. Again the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son, I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies, and in your descendants all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my command. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Beloved, may grace and peace be yours in abundance through knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. His divine power has bestowed on us everything that makes for life and devotion through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and power. Through these he has bestowed on us the precious and very great promises, so that through them you may come to share in the divine nature after escaping from the corruption that is in the world because of evil desire. For this very reason, make effort to supplement your faith with virtue, virtue with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, and endurance with devotion. Devotion with mutual affection, mutual affection with love. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up to heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. And they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Master. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, in the name of Bishop Tobin, on behalf of my brother priests here present this morning, and in the name of our cathedral family, I would like to extend to Gail and to Chip's children and grandchildren, and to his extended family and many friends, our sincere sympathy and the assurance of our supportive prayer in the days and the months that lie ahead. The church, our mother and teacher, instructs the preacher that at the funeral mass, 
he should not eulogize the deceased person, but rather concentrate on the proclamation of the Paschal mystery, the saving passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. However, the instruction goes on to say that if the life of the deceased person has been an extraordinary example of Christian virtue, especially the theological virtues of faith, hope, and love, then the deceased person himself preaches the homily by the manna of his life. Such, I think, is the case with Chip Belt, a man of faith, a man of integrity, and a man of humility. It was evident to anyone who knew Chip at all that he was a man of profound faith, a man who was in love with his Lord. His Catholic faith informed every one of his relationships. Chip was the embodiment of the Catholic gentleman. St. John Henry Newman, the great theologian and spiritual writer, described the Catholic gentleman in this way. He said his great concern is to make everyone feel at ease and at home. He has eyes on all his company. He is tender to the bashful, gentle toward the distant, and merciful toward the absurd. He makes light of his favors when he does them and seems to be receiving when he is actually giving. He never speaks of himself unless compelled. He has no ears for slander or gossip and interprets everything for the best. A perfect description, I think, of our friend and brother Chip. His wife, his children, and his grandchildren were the focus of his love and attention. He spoke of each of them with deep love and always with a broad smile. Chip, as many of you know, had a lovely lyric tenor voice. And sometimes after communion at weekday mass, he would sing a nice hymn of thanksgiving. I asked him more than once to join the choir, and his response was, not my style. <laughs> On the day of Chip's baptism, Jesus took him into his eternal embrace. And Jesus has never abandoned him, in good times and in bad, and in all the ordinary times in between. In point of fact, Chip Belt is more alive at this moment than you and I. He stands at the door of the kingdom of God. The promises that God made to Chip and God made to you and me and continues to make them are true and certain because God does not lie. For Chip, there is no more pain or suffering, but only endless life and endless joy. It is no coincidence, I think, that we bring him to his burial on the Feast of the Annunciation when Our Lady said her yes to God, and Chip was so devoted to the Mother of God in his life. As we bid farewell to this good and faithful man, we make this prayer our own. We give him back to you, O Lord, who first gave him to us. Yet as you did not lose him in the giving, so we do not lose him by his return. For what is yours is ours also, if we belong to you. Life is unending and love is undying, and the boundary of this mortal life is but a horizon, and a horizon is nothing save the limit of our sight. Then lift us up, strong Son of God, that we may see further. Cleanse our eyes that we may see more clearly. And while you prepare a place for us, prepare us also for that happy place, that we may be with you and with Chip and with those we love forevermore. May his gentle soul rest now forever in the peace of his Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you.
Now with renewed faith and confidence, we come before the Lord to offer these prayers and these petitions. For the gift of life and love given to us by Edward, we give thanks to you, O Lord, and ask that you grant him eternal peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for our memories of Edward. May his love, courage, and faith remain an inspiration to his family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You washed Edward with the waters of baptism. You anointed him with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Give him a place among your saints and chosen ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Edward was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the deceased relatives and friends of Edward, may they share an everlasting home with our Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that through the Holy Eucharist we celebrate this day, you will strengthen our faith in the suffering, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus. Hear the prayers we offered for your Son, Edward, and for all the faithful departed, and answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Edward, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him or any human fault have affected him, it may by your loving gift be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with a company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we were nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, with your glorious martyrs, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, Thomas, our bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Edward, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you that they're passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that, strengthened by it, our brother Edward may come now to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Sincere thanks um, to so many people. First of all, to Monsignor Mancini and the staff and the individuals here at the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul for their very, very fine hospitality and welcome the beautiful liturgy they provided for us today. And uh, thanks to Monsignor, especially for his wonderful homily that reminded us that Chip was indeed a Christian Catholic gentleman, but even more a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And certainly in my own name and on behalf of the entire Diocese of Providence, we want to extend to all the members of Chip's family, his many, many friends and colleagues, our very sincere sympathy and prayers at the passing of your dear relative, friend, associate, colleague, Chip Belt. Monsignor mentioned that it's appropriate that we come together on this beautiful feast day in the life of the Church, the Feast of the Annunciation, when Mary was chosen to be the Mother of God, and she said yes to the Lord. Because of her faith and her trust and obedience, she welcomed Jesus into her own life and presented Jesus to the world. I can't help but think in the many ways that Chip did that in his life as well. And appropriate, too, that we come for Holy Mass today right on the cusp, right on the edge of Holy Week. We find ourselves now in the midst of Passion Tide. You notice that all of our crosses are veiled with the purple veils today, reminder that we are entering into a very solemn time in the life of the church, and next week is Holy Week. And we share in the suffering, the death, the passion, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what we celebrate next week in liturgy, Chip certainly experienced in his own life, in the faithful reception of the sacraments, his baptism, and his life of faith, and his reception of the sacraments, his witness to Christ, he too has shared in everything that Jesus did in his life, his ministry, his suffering and death. And now we pray that through God's mercy and goodness, he will come to share in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ as well. It's with that hope, that confidence, we conclude our prayers this day. Brothers and sisters, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even life itself. Let us pray. 
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Edward in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for all the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Now let us take our brother to his place of final rest.